<laughs> All right, let's let's start the first one. So, I mean, we talked about this early in the year, but the the in, the um, the merger is done. It's done. Happened last week, Tuesday. So, uh, what, so j- just just remind us what what's exactly happened. So, yeah, WWE and UFC are merging mm. to um, obviously under the Endeavor um, Group company. They, they've got a company called TKO Holdings. Yep. Uh, which you know they've gonna they've merged into this one group. Obviously, they're, they're gonna be their separate brands. But they're all going to be part of this big company called TKO Holdings, and we saw, um, you know, last week a, a big sort of ceremony at Wall Street with, mm. you know, Dana White, Ari Emanuel, I, I saw the photos, yeah, Triple yeah. A, yeah. Vince McMahon with his little Mexican mustache. <laughs> you get that mustache. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where he got that, but <laughs> it looks fake. <laughs> but um, yeah, they're they're a massive big company, and like obviously a lot of reporters are there asking questions and stuff like that mm. about like what does this entail? You know, is there crossover potential? And yeah, we'll get into it. Man. What do you think? Yeah, like I mean, I thought what I thought at the time. Like it, it was interesting from a business perspective. They put two. I think I read somewhere that like the valuation. In the the TKO structure, was it TKO? No, yeah. it's not. Um, was twenty one million between both the UFC and the WWE, billion, and the yeah. U billion? Sorry, yeah. yes, yes, billion. billion. And and twelve <laughs> of it came from the UFC. So obviously yeah. the, the bigger puller there. So yeah. I think it's interesting oh, the synergy in terms of like the to be that one destination for sports and for fighting. Yeah. And the UFC is just it's doing so well. You know, you say it, it is doing well. It definitely yeah. is doing well. Oh, oh, over the two brands, it's definitely. It has more momentum, yeah, yeah. In, in terms of eyeballs and definitely growth there. So I think it makes sense. Like, uh, what you know, us as content creators, I'm more interested is where where did the synergies come? Because definitely there's a business play. I can yeah. see it and all the fun stuff that investors would be interested in. But like, you know, where where do we get like Sugar Sean O'Malley coming in and you know these <laughs> like fucking pink head and shit and all that? Like, yeah. well, where's where, 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 where do we get Roman Reigns just to, just to come in and actually re- wrestle with these guys? <laughs> I think you know what's interesting, right? Look, it's not gonna it's not gonna happen. It's not gonna happen initially because I think this is first and foremost a business deal. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a business deal, yeah. right? There's gonna be some synergies maybe from a business executive level. I we, we we've yet to see it in, into play. And to be honest, I'm more interested in like the the business drama between the between the personalities. Yeah, man, the, right? the, the, both companies have got a lot of drama, right? Yeah. We've seen what happened with the WWE last year with. Stephanie McMahon and her dad and her, you know, her husband. Mm. And like, there's a lot there happening backstage. Of course, of course. Um, but we've also seen it with, you know, USC and Dana White. Yeah. And, uh, like, there's, there's a lot there. So, I mean, it could be quite tense, I yeah. guess, uh, with all these different personalities. But, like, the synergies, I think, are more, and we've, like, seen this in the past couple of days, a lot of staff been let go Yes, the WWE. Um, but does it, uh, as a person that doesn't watch WWE a lot, does that happen often? Because I know the UFC is notorious for cuts. They streamline their roster consistently. They, it does. Like every about six months or so. I like guess they it have sounds their, like it's about cuts. the same sort of but time this, frame. But this was done on the backdrop of a $1.4 billion broadcast deal yeah, okay. with uh, NBC Universal the same day, basically. But the guys that were cut, they were not big names. No, no, assuming, they, weren't, right? they, weren't, they weren't. So you're really, trimming a bit of the, they were the like fat, training, the blood, right? Yeah, yeah, there was some training level, like, you know, stars, like, and then maybe one star that was a bit like, you know, who Matt Riddle was actually mm. both the UFC and a... Correct, yes, yes, and I remember. WWE, like, he got cut because of he has had some incidents and some bad attitude stuff as well. Yep, yep. Um, but yeah, he actually got killed as part of the cuts as well. But we also saw like a lot of staff, which we expected, right? Mm. A lot of staff to get cut because um, it's like saying, you know, do you need to have, you know, three video guys if, you know, there's already three video guys on the UFC side? And mm. how do you merge that? Like, you know, that, that sort of stuff, I guess, is what they're all going through at the moment. Yep. Um, but yeah, it's just uh, the companies are all sort of trimming down the fat and sort of, coming together to make something special yeah 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 no i agree that that's business as a whole yeah. and i think it's going to be put under a microscope because this this holding group that they've created is essentially to give investors an opportunity to invest specifically into the sports arena and maybe the combat sports arena specifically, well the right? interesting part was when they were questioned right they were questioned about like you know what would this entail like and they like this is coming from like you know the the board members like mm. you know, Nick Khan and stuff like that they're saying look uh, what you could see is have like this mega weekend of UFC and WWE like WWE has you know Smackdown Raw yeah, and then maybe on the Saturday you could have a UFC pay-per-view mm. and then uh, you know a like a 
a WWE pay per view on the on the Sunday. Mm. It's all part of this massive weekend that you can be part of. They can buy a ticket to all, that all comes to one town, um, and that's pro- that's what they sort of see it. Like I think first up, right mm. from the crossover potential. I mean, yeah, I mean we could see. Conor McGregor showing up in a WWE ring. Yeah, yeah. It's possible. Yeah. Um, but they've opened up the door for that and they've opened up the door for like a lot of um, promotional uh, sort, of, sort of stuff as well. Yeah. Um, there's a crossover audience. Yeah. Uh, we saw that when we went to the press conference. There's a lot of... <laughs> well, a lot, a lot of uh, wannabes there, I can tell you that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But um, yeah, it's... it's. But the, the interesting part of this now is, you know, Vince McMahon has gone through his controversies. Yeah. He's like, you know... Oh, had, boy. Is that a little bit of, uh, you know, some stuff with women? That, that is a bit... Uh, Thanks, man. Yeah. yeah creep. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> creep. Well, the mustache isn't helping. <laughs> it's, uh, I think it is helping too much. <laughs> he thinks he's hiding in plain sight with that. Like, but, like, it's not helping. It's uh, it's adding to the creep factor. But, like, yeah, there was, I think, renewed concerns now. I heard some rumours amongst TKO board members that... Mm. Yeah, his allegations, which are you know, still, I think, ongoing still for some reason, mm. that that might affect a, his standing in the company, mm. which, yeah. I mean, if he was promised by Ari Emanuel like a board seat and some control, then it'd be a problem, right? I mean, if people want to use stuff like that as like a, an agenda pull to oust him, like yeah. it's there. He's not helping his cause no, in that no, particular regard, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. But yeah, it's 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 interesting what happens next in the next couple of months, even right mm. as these two companies sort of figure out how to operate. Yeah, you know, all this. Um, you yeah. you alluded to it, but usually when a when companies like merge, uh, they merge for two things. One is the the parent company sees like synergies between the operation, which we can o- yeah. o- obviously see here. Or the other element is usually see an ability to optimize uh, the, the company that's being acquired for, for greater sort of upside. Yeah. And I think we can agree at the moment that the, the, the more successful brand by virtue of whatever, like the, the, the metrics is probably the, the UFC there. Yeah. So if, let, let's just put the creative, the, the marketing hat on, what would you want to see? You've kind of alluded to maybe that mega weekend of like international fight week yeah. where you have there, but what would you like to see as, as like a fan that, Kind of dips your toes into to to both. To well, both here's elements. the interesting thing. You, you'll see the past couple of years has interested me because of the way that I guess a lot of the fighters have been sort of bringing in that WWE type yeah, aspect yeah. in like, you know, promos. The McGregor and, effect, yeah. Uh, the McGregor effect, basically. Yeah, yeah. Um, that sort of stuff is, is good. And I sort of want them to lean more, you'll see to lean more into the showcase sort of thing, which is WWE is great at, right? Yeah. Um, and I think... The other way around, even like yeah, you know, UFC brings a lot of that realism sports to it. Mm. If you inject a little bit of that into the WWE product, I think that'd benefit as well. Yeah, so it benefits both ways, I reckon. Um, yeah, each can learn from each other. Um, and definitely, you know, WWE used to do really good video promos, mm. um, which UFC does as well. Yeah, um, I can see some synergy there as well. They can really it's like yeah, you know, the minds, creative minds mm. of both companies meeting to create some really good video packages as well. So there's a lot there that they could do. Mm. Um, but yeah, for me, it's it's the way that they can learn from each other, you know. Yeah. From the, you know, the, the showcase aspects of it, like, yeah, you know how like a WrestleMania looks, right? Mm. Um, I want some more of that in sort of into the UFC, like the the big sort of feel to the event, you know. Mm. We see UFC events and like it's just the, the cage and it's a light and it's very simple. It works. I mean, they're works, all sold right? out though. Yeah. They're all sold out, right? Yeah. But yeah. imagine like a 100,000 th- seater stadium, right? Yeah. And the UFC, that would be nuts. Yeah. Um, having like a UFC on the stage of like a WrestleMania type crowd, mm. that would be a spectacle to see. I think. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And that's, yeah, that's something I definitely want to see. Go forward. I'm kind of intrigued at like... Uh, is WWE a pay per view model as well? No, so they've they've gone the streaming yeah, route, right? So they used to have route. the WWE Network, yeah. their own streaming thing, and then they made a deal with in America, NBC Universal, yeah, and then yeah. they mm-hmm. put all their content onto there. And yeah, um, but I mean, man, now that these two are merged, these two are so big, the twenty one billion dollar company, they could start their own streaming service. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, I think this. I mean, the UFC Fight Pass is actually amazing if you yeah. could, if you consume all of it in totality. It's pretty big there, but I think that I like, I think in, in the first couple of years, it almost I don't think it doesn't make sense, but like I I feel I, I'd be really surprised to see a lot of innovation, especially yeah. with the kind of the economic climate that we are yeah. in, and also the fact that 
you have such different operators. Yeah. So Dana White's not going to be there for long. Uh, hopefully. Oh, really? Well, what I mean, how long can he be? <laughs> like, what well, I mean. Did you see his response to, I think. A did report, someone ask him that? Yeah, asked ask him about like uh, the crossover audience. He's like, I don't see it. What do you mean? Well, that's, that's what I mean. That, that's what I mean. Yeah. So like, here's the thing, right? So I think the current administ- the executive group of the UFC has have a very specific way when it's done. And especially yeah. when things are working well, it's almost like, why deviate from the source yeah. that's working yeah, yeah. well? So that's why I say that, right? However, if you ever have, a, like, uh, in the future, an executive group that is completely brand new and that can span across both the brands, only then will you be able to see it. Because it's, it's a And that's what we see with the TKO. Exactly, board, right? So that, that's how the... the uh, the or, not org structure, but the, the, the structure is set up in that particular yeah. regard, but the executives don't share that. So imagine a world where, for example, you have a UFC and or a WWE. Or, so UFC pay-per-views are like, what, 60 bucks Australian? Like yeah, give yeah. or take, so I don't know what, yeah. it's like let's call it 45 American. I, I don't even know, right? Yeah. Uh, roughly around that. Uh, they get a lot of money from the gates. The gates are almost always sold out to yeah, a decent yeah. level every time they come to Australia. Yeah. If they really wanted to make money, all they had to, you know, all they have to, if they consistently come to Australia, they'll sell 70% yeah, of an yeah. 80,000 stadium, right? Yeah. So the revenue is there, at least from those sort of ticket sales. But imagine a world where the undercard is wrestling or you're integrating both Somehow. of those sort of yeah. elements because there is a crossover audience. I yeah. watched the WWE when I was growing up, yeah. but then I went into like... The yeah, mixed martial yeah. arts and all that but at the same time you're also going to get those that just don't like it completely yeah. all right so it, it, when innovation happens there's always going to be a little bit of this a little bit of that yeah. and you know like companies like one championship they've done it very well where they've leaned on to innovation and they have now grappling in their in their cars which have muay thai and all that and oh. they've got like the best grapplers in the world yeah. like the gordon ryan's and the um, I can't remember those two American kids. But anyway, all I'm meaning is there's a lot of innovation there. And yeah. you can do innovation when you're a little bit of an upstart, when there's not, you know what I mean? Like when, yeah. when you have that opportunity there, there's going to be a lot more eyes here. But again, I'd have to think that at least the power brokers at B have done so knowing that down the track, probably not now, who, who knows? Maybe maybe we're, not, we're probably not privy to what it is. That there could be something there, but I think it's interesting. Yeah, imagine, the, imagine something. This is where like the creative aspect of it f- for me, I think, can work. Yeah. Imagine like there is like a WWE feud, right, between two people, and there is some real. Sometimes, like in WWE feuds, feuds there is some realism in the fact that the two people actually don't like each other. Yeah. Like they actually legit don't like each other, but they have to work with each other to cre- tell this story, right? Mm. Imagine like they're telling this story and they're like, I. I want to verse you in a UFC fight. Yeah. And I'll do it at UFC, you know, 297 or whatever. Yeah. I could see that happening where two people who don't like each other at all. Yeah. Want to beat the living shit out of each other. Yeah. For real. Yeah. And they're like, okay, go to the UFC and do it. Yeah. Can I give you like a weird one? What? (laughs) Uh, Interdiscipline uh, tag team, meaning you have a wrestler and a (laughs) a UFC fighter versus a wrestler and a UFC fighter. They're like... Honestly, if you like open your mind to like what it could look like now that you have act, yeah. there are a multitude of things you could do. And here's the thing, right? Like the crossover from UFC to WWE has been happening for like three decades now. Yeah. Um, even like I guess you could call Kurt Angle, right? He was a like, an, like he was an Olympic champion. Yeah. He did like a lot of amateur wrestling. He did he would like grappling wrestling and stuff like that. He when he started, like he was just winging it mostly. He he started. But he learnt so much so quick mm. that he became like a household name. Now, yeah. Right? Like the aspects of the showmanship and all that in WWE. That type of stuff I can see going on back and forth, right? And we've seen CM Punk try mm. uh, UFC before and Brock Lesnar and that's gone the other way. Yeah. Um, I think more of that. Now it's going to be something that like instead of, you know, I guess talk, a wrestler talking to Dana, mm. it's like, the rest of can just go, yeah, to TK Holdings. Yeah. I have this interest in maybe doing this. And they go, okay, we can shift you. Yeah. Honestly, the, the big entertainment for me is if we can, uh, if we can get Ariel Helwani and a board <laughs> suit or something like that. Right. Ar- Ariel Hel- Okay. <laughs> don't, don't think I don't tag you, Helwani. Dana should, should know this. <laughs> Ariel Helwani and Dana in a Hell in a Soul match. Let's do it. They would sell tickets to that. I swear to God. I mean, like the infrastructure is that. Could you imagine the rocket he uses? He already has like he only shows two. up time to time. I get yeah. a crowd and stuff. I mean, and he's uh, his shoes are like the principal sponsor there. Yeah, yeah. So get him, get, get the rock in the cage. That's, that's what we say though. Like that's what Dana doesn't get. Like there is like 
sort of cross. There is, but that's what I'm saying. Like yeah. when you have really strong business personalities that are making, they're not like in any financial duress, yeah. like crazily or anything. Yeah. They've kind of but seen I, that they're- I feel like they're going to do it very nuanced. They're not going to go too hard. And I think so too. And it makes sense because you don't want to alienate like, yeah. like what kind of got you there. And yeah. there are a lot of people that, the reason that they tune the UFC is they can't stand the WWE because yeah. they want the real, they want something the real, real fighting, right? They want something real. But again, like you said, actually a lot of the new generation tune in because of the smack talk, because of the bravado, because of all of that yeah. too, right? Like that that appetizer is just as important and we went to that press, as the fight. We went to that press conference. They were eating man. it up. That, well, they were eating that They up. loved that shit. Sean Strickland. <laughs> do, you think, do you think you'd pay money to do a visit a press conference? Like all I know is that that in itself was quite entertaining. It was entertaining. We were there for like it half was an quite hour. entertaining. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we just we'll leave a it. link. We'll leave a link to the the vlog there. But yeah. it was very entertaining. I just think that like there, there are opportunities there. Yeah, I don't know. 100%. I don't exactly know what it looks like, and we're not working for the damn company, so that's their yeah. job. But yeah. like I think at least they've aligned two brands that have a bit of compatibility. Yeah, yeah, that's good. And we'll see. We'll see what happens in the future with it. Yeah. That's it. That's yeah. it.